all-new Dr. Phil. The media has dubbed him the frat boy cannibal killer. Accused of a savage attack and double murder. The report is he's tearing pieces of his face with his teeth growling like an animal. The boy's father speaks out. I grabbed him. I said, what is wrong with you? And he reared back. Behind the horrific headlines. He was saying he had superpowers. He grabbed a bottle of Wessonol and was going to drink it. He's such a good person. It's a story that has shocked and bewildered the nation. Police say an all-American college student transformed into a brutal superhuman killer who violently bit the face of one of his victims. The media has dubbed him the frat boy cannibal killer. And police are running tests to find out whether he might have committed heinous crimes after taking the zombie drug Flocka. Or did he have a severe organic psychotic episode? What could possess an FSU student to commit such an atrocity and then fight off multiple deputies and a canine dog? 911. Young man beating up a woman across the street. Are either of them injured? Yes, there's a girl laying on the ground. He beat her up. Can you tell if she's conscious? No, he does not appear so, no. The couple were sitting, the door was open, enjoying the night air, and suddenly they were attacked, killed, and then bitten by what detectives say appears to be a random, drugged madman. The offender was making animal-like sounds, the grunting, growling. 19-year-old Austin Harriff seemed to have it all. He had good looks and charm. He was a fantastic student and just a year ago was a popular high school football player. But on August 15th, the unimaginable happened. What seemed to start out as a normal night turned into a horrific nightmare. Take a look. The 19-year-old was dining at a Duffy's restaurant when someone set him off. Our suspect became upset about something going on and disgust got up and left the restaurant. Police department. My son, he's taken off. It seems like he's a little um, delusional. Where's he last seen in the restaurant? Is he left on foot? Yes. Do you have any weapons or anything like that? The only thing he has on him is a pocket knife. The surveillance video from inside Duffy's on Indian Town Road shows he's moving normally and calm. He then walked for 2.8 miles here to Kokomo Lane. Angry Austin went into this garage, home to 59-year-old John Stevens and his wife, Michelle Michon. The disturbing crime not only leaving neighbors shocked, but investigators horrified with a random cannibalistic attack. The details of the murder of John and Michelle Stevens by Austin Harriff are unspeakable. The 19-year-old attacker started to eat one of the victim's faces. And where is he? Is he yeah, I think in the area? Garage, right okay. across the street from my house. What kind of injuries do you have? Uh, I've been stabbed in the back. Okay, we got units in route, okay? All right, I'm bleeding pretty bad. The initial drug screening test did not show any drugs present in Austin's system, but that does not test for Flocka or other bath salts. Investigators say it took four deputies and a canine to pull Harif off the victim. Now the sheriff says the suspect, Austin Harif's condition in the hospital is getting worse. He's in life-threatening condition. Whether he will ultimately survive is just not known. Today, Austin's father, Dr. Wade Harif, is speaking out for the first time in a sit-down interview. He is adamant his son is not a monster and says Austin began exhibiting bizarre, unexplained behavior approximately two weeks before these horrifying murders occurred. Wade, thank you for sitting down with me. This has got to be a very terrible time for you. Yeah. Let's begin with the day that this tragic event happened. I'm trying to profile how he behaved when he was around you. You went on this four-hour nature walk? Yes. Yeah. Did you talk about each other? Did you talk about him? What did y'all talk about for four hours out in the woods? I was teasing him, saying watch out for alligators, and it seemed like everybody's having fun. It seemed like he really enjoyed it. Did he have a sense of humor? Yeah. So if you would teach him about an alligator or something like that, he'd yuck it up with you a little bit? Mm-hmm. Would he flash in and out? The only thing I can think of in the four-hour trip is I saw two tortoise shells broken, and he, he says, I don't feel good about this. Stand back. And he got this knife and said, I feel things are wrong here. Then I said, put that damn knife away. 
and he put it away. And then he called me bro, and he was happy. You know, it was very erratic. And so he sat there and ran like three straight miles at the top speed. Just sprinting. Right. He wanted me to follow him. He, 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 he felt that there was, there, was a, there was a presence that he needed to deal with. Was it a menacing presence that he was feeling? Yes. All right. What did you think at that point? Yeah, I knew the whole week he was acting weird, but I just said, put that up, and he snapped out of it, and he started being friendly again, and come, he comes back to the real Austin. I, I used to call him, I want my Frosty back, the funny Austin. He did come back, and I kept on thinking I could lick it by having fun with it. We could lick this thing. It's just a temporary thing. Right. But when he did that, it sort of really caught me by surprise. Whole two weeks, I kept on saying, come on, Austin, and he would sort of come back to normal. Right. So you could kind of snap him back. Right. The night that this tragic event happened, two of you had dinner, correct? Correct. You, you had dinner with him, and your girlfriend, Carrie, was there as well. And my daughter and some friends. You just around a table, everybody eating? Well, what happened was Austin drank a glass of tea, and then he went to the bathroom, and he vanished. And so we're wondering what happened. His mother called and said he was over at her house. And it's the third time that week that he just vanished at when I took him to dinner. How was his demeanor at the table? He was real quiet. How was he with the waiters, and did he interact at all? Yeah, he said he wanted chili to eat. And he just wasn't that talkative. Was he rude to anybody, or was he still embracing kind of normal social graces? He was real quiet. Okay, then he says, I'm going to the bathroom, and just doesn't come back. Right. How far is it to his mother's house? About two miles. And how did he get there? Walk. That took him how long? About 30 minutes. Okay, so he gets there. She calls and says, she, she calls. Text, she texts my daughter and we said, there he is. And so she, we say, what's wrong with him? Bring him back. Did she notice anything unusual about him when he got to the house? Yes. What was it? He grabbed a bottle of Wesson oil and was going to drink it. Then she stopped him and he poured it in a bowl and put Parmesan cheese in it and he ate that. It's very abnormal. This is out of character for him. Yes. He was extremely dehydrated because we'd been on a four hour walk. She brings him back to the restaurant. And you say you tried a tough love approach on him at that point. He comes back in. What did you say? What did you do? Grabbed him by the shirt. And I said, what is wrong with you? Okay, so when, when you grabbed a hold of him, did he seem tense or rigid or hot, cold? Anything you noticed when you grabbed a hold of his shirt? You could see in his eyes he was totally embarrassed. And he reared back. Carrie said, stop right there. And he looked at Carrie in an embarrassed face and stopped. <laughs> she stopped. Then, then he left. Was that the last time you've seen him? Yeah. When he left the restaurant, when was the next time you heard from or about him? I got a call about 2 in the morning. When the phone rang, what were you afraid you were going to hear? He's dead. But the police said that we found Austin. And I was relieved. And two officers came over. I said, is this your son? Show me a picture of him in intensive care. And I said, yes. And they said that uh, he's in the hospital. <sighs> he's killed two people. Coming up, what police told Austin's father? Police said he's eaten them, and the blood that you see is not his own. And later, he, he's such a good person. He would never knowingly do something like that. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. My daughter was privileged in kindergarten. I would pick her up on her pony. A beautiful girl, but look at her now. Pregnant with a guy that's been in prison eight times. I've taken care of her when her mom's living up in her fancy mansion. I have been living in a tent. Then you've got the motel room. Equipped with a giant cockroach slurry. Knowing you're pregnant, you've been drinking. Were you drunk there? 
That's tomorrow. We now return to a Dr. Phil exclusive. It was a case when the knife-wielding attacker, the sheriff says, turned into an adrenaline-fueled animal. People on flaca or bath salts will do this type of behavior where they attack their victim and, and they do the biting and actually just remove pieces of flesh. The question remains, why did he do it? There's absolutely no evidence at this point that our offender knew our victims. It does look like a completely unprovoked and random attack. The police come to your house. Did they describe what had happened at the scene of the crime? The police said he's killed two people and eaten them. And the blood that you see is not his own. Do you have any idea at all that he was capable of going off and doing what he is accused of doing now. No idea whatsoever. He's always been the kindest, caring kid I've ever seen. He always wanted to help people. He's always very, I call him the happy boy. The last two weeks, he started not being happy. He started being real serious. And what do you now understand took place at the scene of the crime? Two people were killed and one was wounded. How did your son wind up in intensive care? It's very puzzling because I read all the things about how they, they pulled him off the people that he killed and all this and that, but he was poisoned. He had his inflamed esophagus and stomach, and his metabolites were way out of whack, and he almost died. And I don't know what happened. The biggest question I have is, where did the poisoning come from? How did he get poisoned? I can't figure it out. Do you think it's possible that he could have walked in that garage and just picked something up and ingested it? Yes, if he'll do that with Wesson oil. But an hour previous, I know he's dehydrated tremendously. What is your theory as to why he would be at these people's home? He stated he was going to spend the night with me that night. I think the fact that he was going around getting rides from people in this now, I think he went over and tried to be friendly or something. I don't know why he went over there but it was, it was one block away from my house. According to the police report, Michelle and John Stevens were sitting in their driveway, open garage. According to the neighbors, they, they often did this. A neighbor hears screams coming from their home and he runs to help and he finds your son on top of John Stevens. Are either of them injured? Yes, there's a girl laying on the ground. He beat her up. Can you tell if she's conscious? No, it does not appear so, no. The report is that he's airing pieces of his face with his teeth in the driveway and that he used a knife that he carried to stab them unknown how many times and that the neighbor tries to break the fight up and receives stab wounds himself. What kind of injuries do you have? Oh, I've been stabbed in the back and I'm bleeding pretty bad. Apparently three stab wounds in the back, neck and head. And the police arrive and find him on top of John Stevens and Michelle Stevens' body. And a female deputy stun guns him several times to get him off, but he doesn't respond. Police dog bites. Four deputies pry him off while he is biting his face and, and growling like an animal. Puncture wounds are discovered on Michelle Stevens' body, and both the neighbor and your son are taken to the hospital in poor condition. At this point, is there any history in any way to indicate that Austin would do something like this? Absolutely none. Is it possible that he's had some kind of psychotic episode here? That's what I believe. He's had the symptoms for about two weeks prior. I just thought he'd snap out of it. He went from a happy person to he can't sleep, pacing the floors. He could barely work, he was tired. There's no question that he had mental problems. It's impossible to know causation, but this sounds like someone that lapsed into a very severe mentally ill state. 
I firmly believe that. Do you believe this was just random? He didn't target these people? You think he just happened on to these folks in some way? It was a way to my house. It was on the way home. It was on the way home. He, he, he took one turn too quickly right, to, to go to my house. And then the situation went badly. Right. I have no idea what happened. Maybe he got somebody to give him a ride and they dropped him off there. I don't know. About this uh, animal-like wine, I found out from the nurses that he has his esophagus burnt. And that's why he had the animal-like breathing and sounds. So his airways were burned. deteriorating. They were burned, so they were inflamed and closing down. That would explain the growling. The son that you knew is this boy here. Yes. When was this picture taken? Probably about six months ago. And at this point, no signs of any unusual behavior at all? No. Very popular kid. Everybody liked him. Because you both look very happy there. You're a very happy kid. Do you think the two of you will ever stand like that again? No. <laughs> Life is ruined. How old is he in this picture here? I think he was in high school. Senior in high school. Tell me about this picture. It's him hugging his beagle dog. He loves loves animals. He loved loved his dog. Slept with him all the time. Was he kind to animals? Yes. Was there ever any time in his life that he wasn't kind to animals? Never. No history of ever being cruel to small animals or any of the traditional signs that you might see? No, never. And this is... That's his girlfriend and he was very much in love with and she was very much in love with him. She's in shock, too. You said he was a weightlifter. Was he serious about it, passionate Very about it? Very serious about it. All his friends admired him. He took him, took religiously, went to the gym, showed him how to do various things and taught people, including me, how to, how to do it. Right. Do you think he was ever involved with steroids? Coming up. Is that more the Austin that you typically knew? That's the beginning of his psychosis. He was in a fraternity. Yes. Have they noticed that he was acting unusual? What have they had to say? We're identical twins. We're both anorexic and bulimic. You get out here and you say, we want money for all of this. I told the producers to send you home. I can't help your girls if you get in the way. The best gift you can give your daughters is get them the hell out of her house. You're encouraging your kids to run away. No, you guys didn't play the evidence. That's bull. Put the damn thing up. I'm calling bull on your bull. My daughter is out of control. 13 years old, extremely provocative. Danielle vanished with the keys to my crew member's car. Oh. She had a knife. She said, well, you want me to stab you? You're such a... Hey, watch your mouth. She's 74 years old. I don't care if she was 90. Missing for six years. Kyron's stepmother was the last known person to see the second grader. I believe that Terry Horman knows where Kyron is. Now. You lied to the media. Yes, because I was told to. The exclusive interview. Tell me why it's taken this long for you to speak out about this. We now return to a Dr. Phil exclusive. A 19-year-old Florida State University student, Austin Harriff, is accused of killing a married couple and seriously injuring a neighbor that rushed to their rescue. I've seen a lot of crime scenes. Uh, I was there last night. I don't know that I've ever seen any, anything with this much violence. And when detectives were here trying to arrest Harris, they say he had enormous strength. He was shouting incoherent things. It took a canine, three deputies, and a taser in order to subdue him and get him finally arrested. He was in a fraternity. Yes. Have they noticed that he was acting unusual? What have they had to say? They're starting to say that... Uh, telling us episodes of... of uh, weird stuff that they encountered and they just blew it off as, as a joke. He, he, my son liked to joke a lot, so they, they, it's hard for him then to determine if it was serious or not. 
like the, the devil was talking to him. One of them said that he witnessed one of his better friends, best friends. What did he say about it? He didn't think anything of it because he thought it was a joke because my son was usually a jokester. What kind of student was Austin? He's always pretty good and studied hard. And I was a, a good student. I was always on his tail to, to do well. And uh, he had straight B's and wanted to be a doctor. He played sports. Football. I, I'll never forget dropping him off in the weight room of Suncoast by himself because I was a little nerdy kid. Football helped me, helped me out a lot, so he really did well. He, he really did well in football. And, and it made him popular, like, like it did me. How tall was Austin? About six, one, I think. And he was quite a bodybuilder. He took a lot of pride in that. This is um, this is a video he put on the internet. What's up, guys? I just want to let you know that I came to a realization of something. I no longer want to follow Arnold or any other bodybuilder. I want to follow myself, you know? I want to actually believe in myself. Not in... I want to learn from other things, other people, other bodybuilders and stuff. But I just know that they're not me, you know? I know it's right for me. I don't need drugs. I know that they can change me. But the thing is, that's not being healthy, you know? Is that more the Austin that you typically knew, or is that more when he was... That's the beginning of his psychosis. That's when he's starting to kind of lose contact? Right. In other words, the statements, it's all about me, I don't need them anymore. And he was reading self-help books. What was your first sign? How did you notice something different? He kept on, like, searching for answers and saying, reading, saying things about, like, he was reading Gandhi and and uh, Tony Robbins and wanting to change, you know, wanting to help people. I want to help people. He started cutting rap songs. He said he wanted to be a rapper. So I was kidding him. You can't be a rapper like Eminem. It's very difficult. Right. But he had a lot of dreams that he was bouncing off me. And then as, as the week progressed, he started getting like th like tears in his eyes with this, with this passion of what he wanted to do and things that were bothering him about the world. and He saw homeless people for the first time and he, was, he would go up to them. And, and uh, one time he left me at the restaurant and he went up to, to a family and said, can you give me a ride home? And he was lucky enough that they gave him a ride home. And uh, you know, he was working in a dental office with me and he, he would start talking very personal to some of the patients, which was embarrassing. So, so it was like, he started he started getting weird. You say personal. What kind of things was he talking to him about? Like religious type things like uh, I want to change the world. I want to help people. Just very inquisitive about life. Do you think he was ever involved with steroids? No. He was always proud of the fact that he did it without steroids. To implement this diet into your diet, you must cut out all sugar, bread, starch, or any other form of carbohydrates. It's pretty effective. Did he ever experiment with drugs? I think he smoked marijuana and uh, drank, drank beer and stuff. Seems like the last few weeks he's on a quest to stop everything. So he was starting to get rigid about that? Get rigid about not doing anything. I don't feel like it'd be beneficial for me to do steroids, you know, it just wouldn't. It damages my health. I feel like I have to depend on it every day. That's a life not worth living for me, you know? When he left the restaurant that night, were you worried about him? Yeah. What was your concern? I knew that he had run away three times and I knew that he would either be at my ex-wife's or my house sooner or later. And then 
2 o'clock in the morning, I think I got a call from the police. And they'd found Austin, and I was so happy. Have you seen him since he's been in the hospital? Once. And what was his condition? He was totally unconscious. Was there some question as to whether he was going to survive the first night? Yes. And what was the problem? Was it his airway? Metabolites and blood pressure was non-existent almost. Right. And renal failure and and uh, internal bleeding. Right. Have they allowed you in to see him? Coming up. You want to know what happened here? Yeah. I want to talk to him. Because he will tell the story, even if he's guilty. Has it ever occurred to you that your parents might have thought you actually did murder your sister, John Bonet, and never asked you because they didn't want to know? John Bonet Ramsey's skull was fractured on the right side of her head. Did you hit your sister over the head with a baseball bat or a flashlight? Had you ever violently attacked her before? John Benet Ramsey was sexually assaulted rather brutally on the night of the murder. Did you ever sexually abuse John Benet? We now return to a Dr. Phil exclusive. Detectives say the delirious 19-year-old honor college student stabbed and killed an innocent couple in a brutal attack using knives and yard tools in the bloodied garage. Tonight, Ivy Stevens, the daughter of John Stevens, knew she would have to lay her parents to rest one day, but never thought it would be this way. I'm feeling every emotion that there is out there. Clearly, anger is at the top of the list at the moment. Not exactly how I imagined my parents would die. I would like to see Austin come out of this and make a full recovery. I hope he has zero brain damage, you know. I hope he is at 100% to uh, face the consequences. Have they allowed you in to see him? No, today they, for some reason, we, we were going to go see him, and they shut it down, the police. The police shut it down? Shut it down. I don't know. That's what's puzzling. There's a policeman standing by the bed, but he's not under arrest. He's handcuffed to the bed. So he's detained but not charged? Correct. You say this is not characteristic for him at all, and if he walks up on these people for whatever reason, and this goes down the way it's been described. If he, in fact, winds up stabbing these people and murdering them, how do you feel about what your son is alleged to have done here, if, in fact, he did it? I feel very terrible about what happened. It's like, it's unbelievable. It's something you'd never dream would happen to you, and it's, it's very traumatic for me. You didn't know those people at all? No. Do you know if they had children or family or anything at all? No. Could you ever conceive that your son might do something like that to anyone, let alone strangers like this? Absolutely not. When his mother found out about this, what was her reaction? Just, she's just stunned, crying all the time. In disbelief. If there's one thing that you want people to know about your son, Austin, this boy that you raised, this boy that you loved, what is it? He cared a lot about people, and he must have had some psychological break for him to ever do this or end this act. But he was a good person. <laughs> An extremely nice, g gentle person. He wouldn't hurt a flea. When he wakes up, he's not going to be able to believe this. He will be able to deal with it. You want to know what happened here? Yeah. I want to talk to him. Because he will tell the story, even if he's guilty. He will tell what, if he did something, he'll tell you. The Austin you knew, the sane Austin, the mentally healthy Austin, this is not in his behavioral repertoire. Absolutely not even close. Something went way wrong here. It's way wrong. You're not trying to excuse it. You're just saying something went way wrong. Something went drastically wrong that he's not capable of, I thought. 
and I want to know what it is because I keep on searching for clues and I can't figure it out. And I'm dying to find out from him what he says. In spite of this all, whatever that answer may be, do you love your boy? I love him. And I'm not going to give up on him. On him. <laughs> Ever. He's going to get through this. You just want people to find the truth before they judge him. Right. People have demonized him. And I can understand why. But all I can do is try to tell the world it's not him. And it's an example of what can happen with mental illness. I'll feel guilty for not catching it earlier. Was there a history of mental illness in the family? Yes. Was he aware of it? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. My daughter was privileged. A beautiful girl, but look at her now. I have been living in a tent. Pregnant with a guy that's been in prison eight times. That's tomorrow. We now return to a Dr. Phil exclusive. Do you think Austin knows what he's done yet? Yes. If he comes around to being the lucid Austin that you have known for most of these 19 years, what will his reaction be when it hits him fully what he's done here? He'll be devastated and he'll never be the same. He'll, he'll never be able to get over it, I don't think. I couldn't think of a kid that would be less prone to do what he did. He was a gentle giant. He looked to be incredibly strong. Yeah, he, 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 I think he was benching 360 in football, like a pro. Yeah. But he, he never missed a day. He'd go to work, drive two hours a day, and, and go to the gym. It was like therapy. And he loved teaching people how to do it. So this was a real sense of pride for him. He had passions in his life. Right. And we don't know what might induce this, but it sounds to me like some really earmarkings of mental illness. You've got religiosity, which often occurs with psychosis, schizophrenia, You've got grandiosity, you've got paranoia, you have signs that are often seen with individuals that are experiencing what could be acute onset of some type of mental illness. Was there a history of mental illness in the family? I had some family members suffer from depression, one from schizophrenia. Was it severe and debilitating or was it managed and lived with? Managed and lived with. Okay, when you say depression, are we talking mild, moderate, severe depression? Severe. Was he aware of it? No. For Austin, if it's in his family tree and in generations preceding him, it would be a risk factor for him having that. You ultimately found out that he had killed a man and his wife just around the block from you there. Yes. I couldn't imagine that happened to me where I'd feel. What, what do you say to their family? If it happened to me, I don't know what I'd do. It's the most horrific, unbelievable thing I could ever imagine happening, that you're killed in your own home in a nice neighborhood like we were living. And I'd be... give my deepest sympathies to them. And I know it's... I just put myself in their shoes. I don't know what I'd do. This is the worst thing I could ever think of. This is the biggest nightmare I could ever even dream of. It's what, what's happened. I'm deeply sorry for what my son did to those people. And I apologize for him. <laughs> because my, my husband would have never done that. No one, he would never know if he'd done anything like that. He, he's such a good person. 
he would never knowingly do something like that. I'm truly sorry for those people. <laughs> I'm trying to keep on trying to figure out. I just got such a guilt of it. I feel guilty that I didn't catch this earlier. And feel guilty that I just running back through my mind about what I've done to different to stop him. Matter of fact, that day I called a psychologist. I know we've decided to get him help. The psychologist called me the next day after it happened. I said, Fred, you're one day late. I guess you've read it in the paper. And I'm truly sorry for what my son did for those people. Coming up, one of the last people to see Austin before the brutal killings. He was very quiet. It was a, a moment where you know you're speaking to somebody, but they're listening, but they don't hear you. It's, it's a nightmare. Turn to a Dr. Phil exclusive. 19 year old Austin Harriff was dubbed the face eating frat boy by the media after being accused of murdering a couple and tearing the flesh off one victim's face and abdomen with his teeth. Police initially suspected that the synthetic street drug Flocka may have sparked the attack. The drug is known to give users superhuman strength and has been linked to cases of violence and cannibalism in the past. As for Austin, his father says his son was exhibiting bizarre behavior at dinner the night of the brutal killings. How do you feel about the neighbor that intervened here and tried to stop this and was injured in the process? He's very brave and I feel terrible what happened to him and it's like not that many people would even get involved, so he's probably a hero. He'd risk his life to, to do that. You sorry for what happened to him? Yes. Sorry for what happened to all of all those people. If your son could, do you believe he would step up and say how sorry he was? Of course. We're going to stay plugged into the situation. We're going to figure out what went wrong here. You, you want to know whatever it is, you want the truth to come out. Right. Okay. Well, thank you for talking to me. Thank you. Wade's girlfriend Carrie was at dinner with Austin before he allegedly murdered Michelle and John Stevens. Carrie, I really appreciate you sitting down and, and talking with me today about this tragic event because I, I do think you have some things to to share you are in a relationship with wade correct correct okay and during that time you've gotten to know austin quite well right yes you spent a lot of time with him mm -hmm. you've observed he and his father together quite a bit quite a bit and other family members as well tell us about this young man that you knew before this night who is this young man a sweet gentle funny guy always considerate always polite caring about others just not a bad word to say. Just a good kid. Any history of violence at all? No. When we see folks that are involved in this type of thing, generally speaking, these things don't come out of the blue. Maybe they've been extremely rebellious and uh, maybe even violent with parents. Do you have any indication that that was the case here? No, not at all. Um, I can think of a specific um, time just a few weeks ago oh. that he had mentioned that he was going to go fishing with his father. See those? We're going fishing. He had stated that he would fish, but he didn't want to kill the fish. Was there a time that you began to observe a behavioral change? Coming up. Let's talk about the night that this occurred. Tell me what happened that evening. Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Was there a time that you began to observe a behavioral change? Yes. And when was this? Just about two weeks ago. His behavior changed. He was more quiet. His explanation was that he wanted to be a better person. He wanted to help people. That he didn't want to be his old self. Did others notice it besides you? Yes. 
Did you and Wade talk about it? Yes. And what did you talk about? Just the difference in his behavior. When you see somebody, you know, they're joking and they like to joke around and smile and laugh a lot, and all of a sudden, they're, they're, they don't joke very much at all. They become more quiet, and it's just it's such a drastic change. Let's talk about the night that this occurred. Tell me what happened that evening. He had come over to the house, so I wanted to um, talk to him, you know, see if I could help out in any way. And um, I talked to him, you know, told him stories about how I was growing up and how it was good to want to change yourself, but, you know, there was nothing wrong with his old self. Maybe he could have a mixture of the old Austin and, and his new self. He was very agreeable, very polite, but very quiet. It was a, a moment where you know you're speaking to somebody, but they're listening, but they don't hear you. So then you go to dinner. Did you have any inkling at that point in the booth that in just a matter of hours that he would be involved in a double murder and wind up in ICU with two people dead and a neighbor seriously injured? No, I, I, I can't. I can't think of anything more unreal and horrific. I, 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 I would have never, never, ever thought. It's, it's a nightmare. Uh, listen, I know you were a very reluctant participant here, but you have really helped in shedding some light on what happened leading up to this, what happened that night, and maybe this will contribute to people's analysis that will help explain what took place. Maybe that helps this not happen the next time or certainly less frequently. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims and the survivor who is still healing and with all the families who have been affected by this tragic event. I want to thank Wade for speaking out during such a painful and shocking time. If you or someone you know is exhibiting mental health problems, seek immediate professional help. Don't let stigma keep you from asking for the help you need. For more information, go to drphil.com. Thanks for being here.